Join us now with more uh, on the headlines out of Washington. Former Senator and New Hampshire Governor Judd Gregg and former Senator and former Indiana Governor Evan Bayh. And uh, neither one of you under... Let me ask you, because we talked about it earlier. We've had people on say a, a shutdown can be an effective way uh, to get a point across in terms of spending. Would you, under any circumstances, ever say it's justified, Judd? Uh, no. No. Um... If you look at the history of shutdowns, I went through three. They accomplished virtually nothing in reducing spending, and they significantly impacted the Republican House membership by having people in swing districts lose their elections. For Republicans, uh, shutdowns are essentially playing Russian roulette with all the chambers full. Uh, we always lose on, the, on this exercise. And it isn't necessary. Uh, that's the point. You can do so much to get this government spending under control and the deficits under control just through reaching agreements on key elements of what's causing that spending. And uh, that would be a comprehensive agreement on Social Security, for example, comprehensive agreement on Medicare. These are very doable events. If you put Evan and I in a row, uh, we could make dramatic progress on accomplishing this. But the problem is Evan's too conservative for his party. I'm too rational for my party. So <laughs> you've got this movement that's hugely populist, which basically uh, doesn't want compromise and doesn't want to govern. Evan, when, when uh, some, the contingent in the, in the uh, House, whether it's a Freedom Caucus or, or the most, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, I don't want to just say they're extreme far right, because do you ever hear extreme far left when they talk about Bernie or AOC or Elizabeth yeah. Warren? You, I don't hear it. Not, not the same, not from, the, not from most people, not from uh, most reporters, but those guys and gals, they think it's almost like a fool me once, fool me twice. They see $33 trillion. They see what's happening. Go, go, okay, go back eight years if you want. But they see what we've done and where we are and say we're left with no other recourse other than to, to something like this to get people's attention. Well, it's an emotional reaction to a difficult situation. And first, I'd like to say I think Judd was spot on in his analysis. And one of the difficulties you're having this morning uh, Joe, as you've got two hopefully rational former senators and former governors trying to explain the internal politics of the House of Representatives, you might be better served by having an expert in irrational psychology or abnormal psychology, but we'll give it our best shot. Yeah, they're trying to make a point. You, you have problem solvers, people like Judd, myself, and there are others there who are elected to try and reach principled compromises to solve the great issues that face our country and this massive budget deficit and Growing debt, which is going to be exacerbated by rising interest rates, is a big problem for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. And you could get people in a room, to, which used to happen, and solve the problem or at least make progress. The problem is uh, the American people have elected a divided government, and the House in particular is very narrowly divided. So a few radicals on either side, and there are some on either side, whatever you want to call them, Joe, can bring the process to a halt. And those people don't think they were sent there to solve problems. They're there to make outrageous statements, to get on cable television. And guess what? That raises the money. There's actually a small sliver of the American people who will send donations to these people who will say, I'm here to fight, and I'm going to bring the whole house down. For the vast majority of Americans, including your viewers this morning, they look at this and they say, we elected these people to solve our problems, and they're actually creating another problem? And that leads to more disillusionment with government, which then leads to people in frustration to vote for autocrats and demagogues and you know, brings our political process into even greater uh, uh, disrepute. By the way, if this does pass, am I the only one on the program this morning who finds it ironic that uh, the problem would be pushed to Halloween? No, yeah, we already met, yeah, October 31st. We, we talked about it. It's pretty, pretty spooky. It can be a great day, my wife's, uh, my wife's birthday. And, um, <sighs> Judd, so I, I thought it was interesting what you said. So the three shutdowns you went through were all Republican. Is, is that... Did you say They're that? They're all energized by the House of Representatives. And, yeah, okay. Uh, but but, but you didn't like it because it hurt, <laughs> not because they did it, but you said they ended up losing seats because of it. That wasn't you your know, only, seats, that wasn't your only point. Spend, and spending was not reduced. That, that, and spending was the not reduced. The goal here is to address the underlying structural problems which are creating this deficit. And it hasn't happened to be the 15% of the budget, which is discretionary dawn defense spending. That's, that's, like arguing over angels dancing on the head of a pin. What's driving the fiscal problems of our nation are entitlements, 
and, and pretty soon uh, interest on the debt. But it, the thing that we can actually address, which would change that, uh, is the entitlement accounts. So interestingly, in the House, they have that problem-solving caucus, which is bipartisan. They came up with a very comprehensive and thoughtful approach to how to get the full deficit issue before the Congress and actually address it. But it's been ignored. And instead, you have this sh people who shout from the corners and really don't want to get in the middle and mix up and get something done, which is not the way you govern in our system. Our system requires that you get in the middle and you, and you mix it up and you reach an agreement and then you move forward. Uh, and that's not going to happen with this House bill. Although the, I give the House credit. If they actually pass this bill and send it to the Senate, then the hot potatoes in the Senate's hand, and I'll be interested to see what they send back. But I don't think it'll be something that McCarthy can handle because uh, he'll lose his speakership, or at least he'll be challenged if he tries to put it on the floor, uh, whatever the Senate sends back. Evan, if, if you were uh, Speaker McCarthy, how would you... What, I mean, we know about wrangling cats and all that stuff, but, but how would you approach this if you were him? Boy, he, it's a true dilemma, Joe. Um, in the short run, he's got to placate that small sliver on his far right. Uh, otherwise, he can't get anything passed. And they might bring down a speakership, you know, here in the next few weeks. But in the long run, as Joe, Judd pointed out, we've seen this before. And the party that causes a shutdown uh, tends to not fare very well in the next election. And that could defeat the number of moderate Republicans from swing districts, which would then bring down his speakership. So uh, my guess is that you try and live to fight another day. So you, you know, do everything you could, call on every shit you had to try and kick it over to the Senate. And then maybe rational uh, heads will prevail. What we really need here is to get this through two things. We need to get through uh, the next election. We don't need this on October 31st. We don't need this in the next middle of the next election cycle and then have a national conversation about what we're going to do about this problem. Um, and hopefully the candidates of both major parties would be willing to address it, although the tendency there is to kick it down the road too. But at least we could try and get a national consensus on the difficult decisions, and they are difficult, uh, that have to be uh, done uh, for the best interest of the country. But the temptation is to play politics in the short run, because there's always an election coming up. So long answer to your question, do everything you can to pass it through the House, uh, kick it over to the Senate, and hopefully the Senate will come back with something that can uh, be a template for uh, actually getting the thing done and would convince the 6 to 10 to 12 radicals in the House caucus, majority caucus, that that's the best they're going to do yeah. and they should take it.